is Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such, such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. It's a very good evening, Zimbabwe. It is a Monday, meaning this is our review show. What a weekend it was indeed, albeit there was an international break. A lot's coming out of this international break because we are definitely at the business end of the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. Some big names going down, but that is for the second half of the show. In the first half, front and center are the Chevrons, where Zimbabwe will be hosting Pakistan in April and May for two test matches and three T20 internationals and all the matches will be played at Harare Sports Club but with no spectators allowed in the stadium. That's the big news we're going to discuss with the ZFM Sport team. They are Mike Madoda, Chris Midzi, Alois Bunjira. We call him Gaza Man. Uh, of course, Sean Tafirinika is our producer and I am Barry Manandi. We've also got some international sports news where Gregor Townsend uh, says Scotland have proved they can be serious contenders for international titles after adding France to their a list of away conquests in the Six Nations. We'll have more international sports news for you when we take you around the world in 60. Begin Pune, where England were beaten in a thrilling one-day series decider against India, despite Sam Karan's heroic 95 not out. In Las Vegas, Francis Ngannou took the UFC heavyweight strap, beating Stipe Miocic with a savage knockout at UFC 260. And then in Texas, where we'll touch down, Billy Horschel claimed his first World Golf Championship title with a 2-1 and one victory over Scotty Scheffler in the final of the W. GC Dell Technologies match play at Austin Country Club. We'll then take a bit of a musical interlude halftime on Monday's edition of ZFM Sport with our play of the day. Today is Manic Monday, so you don't want to miss out on what DJ Baz pulls out of the mix. And then the second half of the show is all about the beautiful game, the Castle World Football Report, we call it. And we kick off in Europe, the World Cup qualifiers, where Portugal captain Cristiano Ronaldo says the whole nation has been harmed after being controversially denied an added time winner in their two or draw against Serbia. In Africa Cup of Nations qualifier, Sudan triumphed 2-0 over South Africa to send the Falcons of Jediane through to the Afghan finals at Bafana Bafana's expense and Zimbabwe round off their qualification campaign against Zambia tonight and warrior skipper Knowledge Musona says preparations for next year's Afghan finals should start now as the team targets going beyond the group stages. It's Manic Monday, so let's get straight into it. Here's Anjali Kijo, joined by Yemi Alade. This one's called Dignity. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors, and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front, local sports news and analysis. Touch base with us on social media. We are there as ZFM Sport. So search for at ZFM Sport across all of your favorite platforms. Uh, we're also there in our individual capacities at Gazaman14, that's Alois Bunjira, at Mike Madoda, that's an obvious one, at Chris Midzi, again obvious, at Sean Tafirenika uh, for our producer, mine, at Barry Menandi. Right, we're talking about uh, Pakistan's incoming tour onto these shores and Zimbabwe. We will host Pakistan in April and May for two test matches and three T20 internationals. And all the matches will be played at Harare Sports Club with no spectators allowed in the stadium. And the tour will begin with the T20 International Series scheduled from the 21st, the 23rd and the 25th of April. The first test match is penciled for the 29th of April, while the second one is set for the 7th of May. Now, Mike, this is absolutely good news that Pakistanis arrive on the 17th of April. 
April. Uh, they're already in South Africa. This is exactly what the Chevrons needed. A quick turnaround of matches after matches with quality opposition. Yeah, this is quality opposition, Barry. Uh, we expected the likes of Baba Razam to be uh, coming to Zimbabwe. And if you have to name the premier batsman in the world right now, uh, Baba Razam is right up there next to Steve Smith, Virat Kohli, uh, Kane Williamson and Joe Root. So this is going to be a different test uh, for the Chevrons uh, compared to Afghanistan. Whereas we expected to beat Afghanistan, I know we lost, but we certainly went in with the high hopes that we could be uh, able to dominate Afghanistan in a ourselves i think in this game we go in as the team of course uh, that is hoping to cause something of an upset against a superior opposition the pakistanis though uh, can be erratic at times uh, they can lose concentration at times if they feel that uh, you know the task is maybe not as glamorous they tend to to ebb and flow depending on the opposition that's uh, put in front of them so whilst they're capable of beating the very best in the world uh you know they're also capable of sometimes falling prey uh to one or two of the minor nations so we're hoping that we can catch them cold uh but the fact that they're coming in from south africa they're coming in uh, from uh, playing a series against south africa means that they come in with a bit of cricket under their belt so zimbabwe will need to play well to be competitive in this series yeah and uh be competitive I think is what we can hope for Chris because uh, in truth uh, when we last played them and I know we played them only in white ball cricket the, in uh, October November last year when we took the trip out to Pakistan but even in those two series we couldn't land a glove on them uh, so much less when we get to the to the test series so we'll, we'll have to try and be as competitive as we can Mike points out the quality of this opposition uh, our boys will need to be absolutely sharp yeah, Zimbabwe, we, we need them to be competitive. We need them to show that, first of all, they're coming um, out of this test series of, against Afghanistan, that they've learned something from that test series. We need them to polish up on some of the areas that we talked about when they went out to play against Afghanistan. So I'm hoping that that experience, first of all, managed to enrich some of the players, especially seeing as we had a whole lot of young players that were um, being brought into the team. I'm hoping that it enriches them as players, that it brings some experience to them. But when it comes to Pakistan, we absolutely need to be on our A game or else it's going to be um, just another whitewash. Um, it's pretty easy for a team like Pakistan that's coming off, like Mike said, off that series against South Africa to come in and basically uh, trample all over us. But if the boys are competitive, we'll be able to hold our own here. Well, we'll certainly need the likes of Brendan Taylor, the likes of Craig Irvine, uh, the players that were missing uh, from uh, the tour uh, to Afghanistan, or should I say the United Arab Emirates. We need those guys to come in, uh, bring some experience uh, in the ranks uh, of the Chevrons, and also not just uh, put in experience, but also put in big performances. Uh, we were too brittle at times, especially in our batting, uh, and we will need to perform with the bat. We also need to improve in our fielding, because Pakistan are also a very... Uh, should I say, uh, I was going to use the word incompetent, but I was going to say they're very average <laughs> fielding side. They also tend to drop lots of catches. Uh, they can be sloppy in the field. So if there's an area where we can get a 20, 25, 30 run advantage on the Pakistanis, it's by uh, fielding uh, well and, feel, and making sure that we take our catches because they will always give you a chance, Pakistan, in the field and you've got to take those chances. Quality in the field will mean uh, so much uh, in this series. Uh, because when you throw back to uh, that series we spoke about earlier, October, November last year, uh, Pakistan winning the one-day international series 2-1. We were competitive in that one. Uh, the T20 international series, that one ending 3-0 in favor of uh, Pakistan. We haven't played test cricket against Pakistan since September 2013. So our boys will be chomping at the bit and looking forward to this in a major way. Let's take a quick look at uh, your Logan Cup results. Uh, Southern Rocks returning to first class uh, for the first time. Uh, since 2013-2014 season have won the Logan Cup for the first time with a match to spare having gained a first innings of 256 at Old Herarian Sports Club uh, they bowled out their nearest rivals Eagles a second time for 137 to register a fine victory by an innings and 119 runs the Southern Rocks are doing very well Michael and uh, good to see sort of uh, players who are knocking on the door young players like Andre Odendal uh, scored religiously we've been following him he's he's been scoring runs uh, uh, quite well in this competition and then getting an 80 against the Eagles in this game 
Yeah, Roy K, another one as well with uh, 96. Uh, so they are playing well, the Southern Rocks. And I think uh, the real story with the Southern Rocks is that they've bounced back phenomenally well from where they were three, four years ago because they looked like they were in the dumps. Uh, they looked like they were arguably the worst side uh, in, in the competition. But uh, they've come back and they're playing some really, really good cricket. And uh, the fact that they've dominated this, Barry, if you just take a look at the standings, uh, they've mm. finished a full 10 points clear. Uh, of the rhinos who were in um second place and 15 points clear uh, of the Eagles who you would have expected to have done a lot better in this competition and they were in third place so it's been thoroughly dominant and thoroughly deserved and that uh, innings and 119 run victory uh, over their nearest challenges the Eagles I think really underlines their superiority in the Logan Cup this time around. Now looking very solid are the Southern Rocks the champions of the Logan uh, Cup already with a game to spare. In another game in a thrilling finish at Harare Sports Club on Saturday. Rhinos chased down a daunting target of 371 to beat Mountaineers by the narrowest possible margin of just one wicket with Brandon Mavuta playing a vital innings of 20 at the death. A very exciting cricket happening in the Logan Cup and hopefully that translates to a competitive Chevron setup as well as a transformed Chevron setup as we continue to see new names blooded in. But with the bedrock of the experienced ones. Hi, my name is Sean Williams, Zimbabwe cricket captain. You're listening to ZFM Sport. Z. Let's give you a local sports news roundup where the National Athletics Association of Zimbabwe successfully staged its first event of the year when more than 100 athletes took part in the National Open Championships held at White City Stadium on Saturday. The competition was conducted under strict COVID-19 prevention protocols and was hosted by the Bulawayo Athletics Board. Their chairperson, Watson Madanika, was happy with the level of competition and says that coaches will now go back to work on improving athletes its times and also improving their techniques. Let's go to motorsport news where former Dakar Rally rookie winner and top 10 finisher Conrad Rautenbach yesterday returned to the South African motor racing scene. Rautenbach, who's very excited to be back racing in South Africa, took part in the opening day of the two-day South African cross-country auto round one at Daustrum in Mupumalanga. The Zimbabwe driver is racing alongside Rian Greeling in the Penta and Moto branded redlined VK56. Let's wrap it up with news out of the Castellaga Premier Soccer League with Five votes were the difference as John Fats Sivanda ousted incumbent Kenneth Mushlope from the Highlanders chairmanship post in elections held at Highlanders Sports Club yesterday. Sivanda, who is a farmer and pharmacist, garnered 154 votes of the Highlanders members that attended the elective meeting, compared to 149 for the outgoing Mushlope. Incumbent Israel Moyo also lost to challenger Victoria Falls based Morgan Gaza Dube in the Secretary General's contest getting 91 votes against Dewey's 212. From the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's ZFM Sport. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. Just a reminder that the second half of the show is the Castle Lager World Football Report. We'll be talking about the AFCON qualifiers. Zimbabwe taking on Zambia tonight. We'll take a look at the possible starting 11 and some of the players that would love to see given an opportunity by Logarosic in what is effectively a dead rubber with the Warriors having qualified and Zambia having failed to do so. And then we'll also have a look at Europe where Cristiano Ronaldo is not a happy man, but there are many of his countrymen that feel that he should never have thrown off the armband and walked off before the final whistle. We'll get to hear the thoughts of the team in studio. Before we get there, let's give you some rugby. Where Scotland denied France the Six Nations Championship and their coach Gregor Townsend says that the Scots have proved that they can be serious contenders for international titles after adding Le Bleu to the list of away con conquests in the Six Nations Championship. Friday night's 27-23 victory in Paris for 14-man Scotland came against a home side looking to win the championship. Let's hear from former Scotland player, now coach Gregor Townsend. As coaches, you always look at the last game of a campaign as, as one you want to win because you um, obviously have a few weeks where you're not too angry with yourself or 
looking to to find solutions to problems. But um, to to win was was great from our perspective. To win and share the evening with the, the guys was enjoyable. It's um, maybe not I'm not feeling it now, but uh, it was it was a good night. Yeah, I, th I think the character they showed to to come back from behind to obviously win when we're at, we're a man down. I know they got a yellow card, but to to get that. That response when we, we got a red card was was superb, um, and and obviously just to win here in a, in a stadium we've, we've only won once before showed that this this team will will keep trying, and even, even though we have had two defeats this year in, in all our games, we've shown that same spirit, and I say it's a credit to the players. They, they, they've got the physical capabilities through their effort to keep going, but they've got the togetherness. To, to adapt and overcome any anything that comes their way. So, no, we're, we're delighted. Like, we're just obviously disappointed that it's, that it's not better than fourth place. Like the, the effort they they put in here in the last game and in the, in the first game in particular, um, I feel deserves more than, than a fourth place in the table. Z. Well, Barry, it's difficult to deny uh, his thinking uh, when uh, Scotland have shown over the course of this Six Nations Championship and even going back 24 months that they can now mix it with the best in the world. Absolutely. Uh, this is this Scotland side. And uh, you know what? Uh, perhaps we didn't have time on Friday, uh, but you mentioned it when you, say, you talked about the fact that it's going to be tough for France to get the 21 points that they required against this Scottish side uh, because of its quality, because of its ability and because of the fact that they plays um, a, a brand of rugby that is not necessarily uh, all all Northern Hemisphere. If you understand what I'm saying, then they're, they're not all about the pack. They're not all about the pieces they actually have quite a bit of uh, of talent not least of all of course uh, with Finn Russell now uh, he was unfortunately sent off uh, in, the, in the with the last 10 minutes remaining but before that uh, he had been the fulcrum of uh, engineering the relentless pressure that France had to sustain so this Scottish side is absolutely talented and he has every right to say the things that he's saying Gregor Townsend yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you consider that uh, they were not without uh, the New Zealand born and bred Sean Maitland, uh, you then think that they could actually have been stronger, especially in their backline play in this particular game. But uh, they had Duhan van der Merwe, who could have been a springbok, but is now a brave Scot. And he scored a last gasp winner that followed relentless pressure. And Chris, you've got to say for France, they have to take a long, hard look at themselves because they went from one high last week of beating mm -hmm. Wales and then giving themselves a chance of winning this to actually nearly finishing in third because had Scotland scored just four more points, they would have finished in second. Absolutely. And uh, France, I think throughout this competition, we've been talking about France, we've been pointing to the fantastic rugby that they're playing. But when it comes to these um, last gasp moments, I think France definitely needs to take a long, hard look in the mirror about playing the full game and managing to get these wins over because they're in it for most of the game. But just when it comes to those final critical moments, uh, France kind of seems to not wither away, but they're not there in the final moments. They don't play the way they should. And as as a result, uh, they slumped to the other teams. Well, the net result of what happened in Paris on Friday night was that the Welsh Dragons were crowned Six Nations Championship. Let's hear from the skipper, Alan Wynne Jones. To have the opportunity to do it here it is really special, but obviously, you know, that not to be able to share it with the fans is, is, um, is disappointing, but hopefully, you know, there'll be opportunity for the fans to, to enjoy and, um, you know, have their, their time with the trophies, etc. Further down the line, I think we can make comparisons about previous teams and previous um, campaigns, competitions, etc. I think the the biggest one is I'm just just really proud, probably, of um, the attitude on field, but also the the discipline off field. Obviously, we've had our blips, like most um, you know environments have, because of the situation, like I say. But to be able to come through it like we have. Um, it's just just makes me proud not not on the like I say not on the rugby sense but the off field self sense in particular because that's enabled us to carry on and, uh, and crack on and you know perform and, and train like we have. See.
Well, Pivx men, Barry, they lost just once in this campaign. And we've got to say that at the end of it all, perhaps the best side won the competition. Yeah, absolutely. The best side did, uh, the be- the side that played the most exciting rugby, uh, the side that in truth uh, many didn't necessarily tip for this competition came out and did what they needed to do. What scares me is that they lose one game uh, to France last week uh, and that was their last game of the campaign uh, and Wayne Pivak, their coach, says that they are quite, they're not the finished product. So he can see elements of improvement and where he, he can make the side better. So I think that uh, uh, all of the, the teams within the Six Nations competition need to sit up and take notice of this Welsh side. They are absolutely good value. Well, let's move to the Southern Hemisphere and one side that will have to improve if they have designs of landing Super Rugby Aotearoa is the Auckland Blues. They lost this past weekend to a Damien McKenzie inspired Waikatu Chiefs 15-12 with the Chiefs snatching victory right at the death in what was a cliffhanger in Hamilton. It gave the Chiefs back-to-back wins and lifted them off the bottom of the ladder after their win over the Wellington Hurricanes last week ended a record equaling run of 11 consecutive losses let's hear from chiefs co-captain brad weber the belief was always there there was never a never a time where we thought we couldn't take that and um man there was a hell of a lot of fight there and um shows what chiefs money is all about to be honest i think it probably started with the the crusaders week um sort of never say die attitude and we hung on to that and um built into the Hurricanes game and then same here tonight. We had the belief and the crowd was in behind us the whole time and, and, and got us home. Z. Chris, I know you're a big fan of the Blues, but uh, it's now two defeats on the spin. <laughs> it's two defeats on the spin and basically what this means is um, the Canterbury Crusaders really just become um, runaway winners once again in this competition. We had thought that the Blues had strengthened their side, that they'd be able to get all of these wins, that they'd mount a significant challenge, but this is not necessarily what we're seeing. And as much as, look, it's, um, it's two losses on the go, but it's very easy for that to become three and four. And Barry, that's the thing about New Zealand rugby. We've talked about, yes, certain sides lose and certain sides win. But if you do watch the matches over the course of 80 minutes, the sides are usually very evenly matched and matches are often decided in moments. Yeah, um, and a lot of people were poo-pooing the the um, uh, Chiefs and saying that oh, you know, they they they're out of this competition. They're not doing great and whatnot. They were having consecutive losses and all sorts. But here's the difference: uh, Chiefs put puts together two wins on the spin, and boom, they 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 they're right in mid table, as it were, in inverted commas. So I think that it demonstrates the point that you're making that these teams are not uh, far apart in terms of quality and class. Uh, and so when a team loses, invariably They lose by very narrow margins uh, because of the open, expansive, exciting rugby being played across uh, this competition. I know, Chris, you talked about the Crusaders potentially being runaway uh, winners of this competition because when we take a look at the standings, the Crusaders have played four, they've won four, and they have got 18 points. They've bagged two bonus points. The Blues are in second, and they're already trailing by eight points. They've got just 10 points. And then the Chiefs have eight, the Hurricanes five, the Highlanders five. So between number two and five, it's still nice and tight. Just one game could actually swing it. How crucial is it that one of these sides now is able to get maximum points over the Crusaders in the next round of matches? I think it's absolutely critical. Um, If they'll be able to do so is another uh, separate discussion. But I think that in order for this to not become a crusaders versus the others and that for that to be a consistent theme throughout the competition someone needs to get get points against the crusaders we had ruled the chiefs out but they managed to do that and like you guys pointed out these teams are so evenly matched that it comes down to very small moments in a particular game and if someone manages to win those moments against the crusaders then i think it's going to make for fantastic movement up and down this ladder Let's go to Australia, Super Rugby AU. And there were a couple of big wins for the Brumbies and the Reds. The 
Australian Capital Territory side getting the better of Western Force 42 to 14. And the Tars, they keep on losing, surprisingly. They were expected to be a bit strong, they were expected to challenge, but this time Queensland got the better of them with a swashbuckling performance. That one ending 46 14 in favor of the Reds. How do things stand in Super Rugby AU? Queensland are leading the way on 23 points. The Brumbies are just three points behind behind on 20 and then there's a 10 point drop to third place the melbourne rebels who got 10 the western force have got six and the tars the waratars are bottom they have just one point and that will be disappointing is it barry for the waratars because traditionally they are always very strong very consistent yeah, very consistent uh, in previous uh, competitions and uh, in Super Rugby uh, proper. They, they, they've always been there or thereabouts. So to be bottom, the basement side uh, in their home competition, Super Rugby AU, uh, has got to be very disappointing for them. Hi, I'm JC Krill, Springbok and Blue Bulls backline player. You are listening to ZFM Sports. Around the world in 60 seconds. International sports news. We take off in Pune where England were beaten in a thrilling one-day series decider against India despite Sam Karan's heroic 95 not out. Chasing 330, England looked beaten at 200 for 7 in the 31st over only for Karan to keep them afloat by adding 57 with Adil Rashid and 60 with Mark Wood. As left arm seaman Natarajan held his nerve, Karan could find the boundary only once leaving England 7 runs short on 322 for 9 and India 2-1 series winners. We'll head over to Las Vegas where Francis Ngano took the UFC heavyweight strap beating Stipe Mayokic with a savage knockout at UFC 260. The Cameroonian French fighter faced Mayokic for the second time after losing his title fight to the American at UFC 220 by unanimous decision. The fight in January 2018 went the distance but Saturday night's bout only went 52 seconds into the second round. We'll touch down in Texas where Billy Horschel claimed his first world golf championship title with a two and one victory over Scotty Schaffler in the final of the WGC Dell Technologies match play at Austin Country Club. The 34 year old kept the pressure on his 24 year old opponent in an attritional match which featured only two birdies to secure his sixth PGA Tour title at the 17th hole after almost four hours out on the course. Formula One season got underway during the weekend and Lewis Hamilton won the Bahrain Grand Prix after surviving a gripping late race battle with Max Verstappen. Don't miss the full Formula One report on tomorrow's show for full details on the season opener. The Castle Lager Premier Soccer League. La Liga. Serie A. The English Premier League. The Bundesliga. It all comes together with the Castle on the Castle Lager World Football Report. All right, like we said, we'll be taking a look at Europe and then we'll dive into Africa. Let's start with Europe, where your key weekend qualifier results for Qatar 2022. Czech Republic, one all draw with Belgium. Czech Republic will certainly be happy with that result. Netherlands, 2-0 winners over Latvia. Turkey, good away win over nowhere. They won a 3-0 to Turkey. Croatia, 1-0 winners over Cyprus. Uh, the match between Bulgaria and Italy ended 2-0 in favor of Italy, uh, while Switzerland won 1-0 over Lithuania. France, 2-0 winners over Kazakhstan and Spain, struggling through to get a 2-1 victory over Georgia and fighting back uh, because Georgia took the lead in that game. But Spain uh, doing what Spain does in the end, controlling possession and wearing down their opponents. In other news, Portugal captain Cristiano Ronaldo says the whole nation has been harmed after being controversially denied an added time winner in their World Cup qualifying 2 all draw against uh, Serbia. That's the one that Mike was talking about at the top of the show, Alois. Uh, and you've got to say to yourself that Cristiano Ronaldo then throwing his armband down to the ground, walking off the pitch before the, the game had officially uh, come to an end, was a petulant reaction uh, to a... Uh, to uh, Yes, it was a goal and he had every right to be upset, but then don't be petulant about it. Yeah, you know, he's a captain, he's a big player, he worked widely, you know, he's known. He, he, there, was, there was no need 
for for that kind of tantrum i was shocked as well uh, myself that he, for a person like him you could do that you know you're the captain they choose you to be captain for that particular reason to lead by example you know he is actually the one who is actually supposed to be comforting players when they get into such situations you know and cooling them down but for him to do what he did i think that tantrum was uncalled for and he should he should actually probably apologize especially to his teammates as well so that you know what he can appease himself because I, I was not impressed and I'm sure yeah. the rest of the world and I was not impressed about it. And Mike, you look at uh, the symbolism of the captain's armband amongst uh, sports teams generally and then of course in football uh, specifically. Uh, it is it is a, a hallowed item of clothing and uh, for you to just rip it off, throw it to the ground is is uh, not only disrespectful, it is uh, and I completely agree with Alois uh, that there needs mm. to be an apology. Yeah, I think to be honest, but also it's important not to blow it out of proportion so that it becomes the talking point and becomes a distraction around the Portugal team. Uh, I think it's important that obviously that the coach uh, and uh, the leadership of the team just have a chat to him about his responsibilities as uh, one of the leading players in the world. I mean, uh, there are a lot of children who would have been watching that and they don't want to learn that sort of petulance because it's coming from their idol it's coming from their hero uh we've got to learn to take bad decisions in the world of sport and and keep on going and keep on ticking it's it's good to set a, a fine example like alloy said so i think he deserves a talking to i wouldn't necessarily perhaps you know drag him over hot coals and force him to go to make a public apology <laughs> i think he must probably do that of his own volition i think he must yeah. be reminded of his responsibility yeah, reminded of his uh, responsibilities is probably the way to go. Uh, uh, Chris, finally on this matter, you got to say to yourself, you understand, because in truth, without goal line technology, uh, nowadays we almost take goal line technology for granted. Uh, but there was no goal line mm -hmm. technology in that game. That, ga that ball clear, uh, clearly was beyond the line. The linesman missed it. Uh, and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo uh, we had every right to be upset because that was going to be the winning goal and he was going to score it. Yeah, I think uh, the, the impact of that decision where it was a clear goal. I think if you take a look at all the images, all the video footage, clear goal. And it would have swung um, that match in a completely different direction. It would have been a draw. It would have been a win for Portugal. So I understand um, how upset he was. But I think it just points to, like you said, the importance of that goal line technology and ensuring that matches uh, go the way they're supposed to go if a team deserves the win. And in this scenario, clearly Portugal deserved the win. All right, let's give you the rest uh, of your results out of Europe where Germany maintains their perfect start to qualifying after an early Serge Gnabry goal gave them a 1-0 win over Romania in Group J although they missed a string of chances against the home side in other news Gareth Southgate kept his cards close to his chest when asked how he would address the shortcomings on display in England's 2-0 win in Albania in time for their next World Cup qualifier with Poland England getting the win but looking a pale shadow of themselves From Rufaro to Barberfield, Mandava to Nyamunga, all the perfect moments in the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League come together on ZFM Sport. The beating drum. The roaring fans. Take a ride on the wild side with the Africa Report on ZFM Sport. This past weekend, continuing football has come home to Africa and Sudan triumphed 2 nil over South Africa yesterday to send themselves through to the finals of the Africa Cup of Nations at Mafana Bafana's expense. First half goals from Saifel, Dean Maki and Mohammed Abdel Rahman did the damage for Sudan, taking them to their first finals since 2012. What a remarkable achievement uh, for Sudan. And uh, Alois, I want to take you back to last week where we talked about the need for Bafana Bafana to go all out and try and beat Ghana in South Africa because any other result would have left them vulnerable and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, it was uh, it was really bad. You know, when you look at the Ghana that they played, Ghana was under strength as well. They didn't have Pati, they didn't have the Ayo twins, Ayo brothers, and they, they they created chances. They could have won the match, but unfortunately they couldn't. And we talked about it for for sure that now they are going into a lion's den. We actually said they were going to Sudan. It was always going to be war because it, it's not it's never easy. 
to go and play a deciding match away from home even if we, you need a draw a lot of things do happen and when you look at Bafana Bafana as they are right now they are not this kind of Bafana Bafana we all knew the character is lacking so going away to play against Sudan was always going to be very difficult like you said Mike I agree with you 100% the game that they were supposed to win was against Ghana in South Africa they could have sealed their qualification right there but unfortunately they couldn't win this is a disaster isn't it Chris uh, for Bafana Bafana uh, they would have expected to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations this is an expanded AFCON which features 24 teams which means that nearly one in two of the nations in Africa have got a chance to qualify and South Africa I think for the fourth time in the last seven editions find themselves missing from this African party yeah and four four times out of seven editions where you find Bafana Bafana missing I think is is not a good record on their part but I think when it comes to that quality in the side of Bafana Bafana I think it's evidence in uh, the fact that they were unable to qualify for AFCON if you take a look at the nations that have qualified so far and just taking a look at their group Bafana Bafana should have been able to make it out of this group and qualify they've been unable to do so and it's it's a catastrophe but I think they need to look inward at this point they need to look inwards, Barry. Is that advice from Chris? Uh, you know, where do they go to? Because South Africa has been on a downward spiral for the last decade and a half. Yep. You know, it's been investment, but uh, no return on investment. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, corporate support, but nothing to match the zeal uh, of the money that's there in South Africa. Yeah. You know, someone was saying to me that if the other nations in Southern Africa, notably Zimbabwe, had just <laughs> a quarter of South Africa's <laughs> budget, a quarter of their resources, imagine what we could achieve. Yeah, we can only look uh, longingly uh, and, and, and almost lustfully at uh, the amount of resources, the amount of support that uh, South African football gets uh, from the corporate community, the way in which they professionalize their game. It's almost first world. Uh, but I feel that Safa uh, undercuts Bafana uh, because when you look at Molife and Tseki, uh, look, he's not good enough. He's not the sort of level of coach that Bafana should be having. So with the amount of resources that they have, they should be getting coaches out of the top draw when they were uh, hooking up with the likes of uh, uh, Pereira out of Brazil uh, that was when they were getting serious and the results obviously uh, uh, reflected the, the the ability of the coach right now they don't have the right coach to take them forward so that's Bafana Bafana out and Sudan in remember they hosted the very first Africa Cup of Nations that was held in 1957 they'll be joined by Nigeria who beat their neighbors Benin 1-0 in Porto Novo a journey they made not by plane not by train not by bus but actually went <laughs> via a boat <laughs> a steamer uh, into Benin <laughs> and they still managed to do the business and in one of the mad one of their practice sessions actually they had to play under not floodlight guys or failing light but they had to use the moon it was a full moon and oh, they still wow. managed to practice this is the level of commitment guys that we are talking about these are full internationals coming out of europe who play for some of the best clubs but when they need to knuckle down they knuckle down when it's necessary ivory coast are also through after they beat niger 3-0 Alcohol may be hazardous to health if consumed to excess. The operation of machinery or driving after the consumption of alcohol is not advisable. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18 years. To make house, you need four ingredients. Keyboards. Percussion. Bass. And trumpet. To make great house, you need to know how to combine them in just the right way. To make beer, you also need four ingredients. Hops, malted barley, maize and water. To make a great beer, you need to know how to combine them in just the right way too. For a taste that is somewhat dry, somewhat bitter, never sweet. It all comes together with a castle. Hi, I'm Various Coach Zdravko Logarusic and you are listening to ZFM Sport. Sports with a difference. Z. 
There's action on home soil tonight. Zimbabwe round off their qualification campaign against Zambia. And Warriors captain Knowledge Musona says preparations for next year's AFCON should start now as the team targets going beyond the group stages. Zimbabwe booked their place at the final set for Cameroon in January next year after a 1-0 win over Botswana last Thursday night. Alois, we just managed to qualify. And in as much as this is a dead rubber, could it also be a good indication of where we are? This is a Zambia side that troubled uh, Algeria last week as well. Yeah, I, I still think that we don't have to underrate them and I still think we, have, we still have to take the match, uh, the match seriously and try to win it. This is a Zambia that has already declared that they are also using this match to already prepare for their World Cup qualifiers because they know that they are already out and they, they it's kind of like a disgrace in Zambia as well that they didn't qualify. So they want to redeem themselves. They're coming with guns blazing. Even the players as well, they want to come and redeem themselves. They want to uh, make sure that they're in the squad for the uh, for the World Cup qualifiers as well. So they are taking this game seriously as much as it is a dead rubber. Like Knowledge said, we also need to take this game as our beginning of uh, preparations for, for that AFCON. And also remember, we also have World Cup qualifiers as well. So we need to keep a strong squad we need to keep the momentum of winning you know that culture of winning is also important and we are at home we don't want to lose at home whether it's a dead rubber or not and remember also the calf rankings we also need these points to also garner uh, the points so that we can actually keep on improving our calf rankings because for the future we need the uh, the good standing in calf rankings so that we can actually get a good draw we can actually be seated as well when the draws are being done we need to we need to keep pushing so that we can get back to the top 10 in africa even top 15 in africa so that we can get those uh, kind of uh, uh, seating that we need. But like I said as well, we, the culture of winning needs to be maintained, although it's also good to give other players that didn't really uh, participate to get, get them game, game time as well. So, Mike, just going off of what Alice has just said, uh, giving those players game time, um, Look, Garisic had pointed out that this is something that he's going to be doing in this match, uh, that he's going to be giving game time to some other Warriors that he'd like to see uh, out on the field as well. Look, Garisic kind of redeemed himself last week. Do we continue to test him? And is this another test um, of Look, Garisic himself as our national team coach? I don't think he redeemed himself, Chris. Uh, I think Zimbabwe qualified and uh, we must congratulate uh, Logarisic and the Warriors for doing that. But in terms of Zimbabwe's playing style, their approach, I think the jury is still out. Um, so we have qualified, yes, but this is expected. It's a 2014 tournament now, nearly one in two uh, in Africa get to participate at, at AFCON. We've qualified for the last two editions. So uh, qualification, I think, was expected, despite the fact that it was quite a challenging group uh, with the likes of Zambia. And uh, Zambia are no pushovers. But what I'd like to see from Logarisic is uh, him test out uh, a few of our players today that have been on the fringe you know players like last jesse who's playing mm -hmm. out in sudan i'd love to see what he can do uh in that warriors midfield uh, so is uh, butolezi uh, Nube, i mean who has been outstanding in south africa uh for amazulu for a few seasons now i'd love to see him given a run out and then martin mapisa i think a lot of people are curious about his capacity about his ability he's playing in spain uh even though it's at a lower level in spain but it's a level that's considered to be a lot higher than in africa so would love mm -hmm. to see if he's given the gloves for the warriors in this game against zambia can he be be as assured uh, as talbot shumba can he be commanding uh, and can he actually put in a good performance so i would love to see him do that just give some of the fringe players an opportunity but not make wholesale changes like alois pointed out we need the win we need the points so that we continue to to rise up the fifa and calf rankings we definitely need those points for the calf rankings as well as those fifa rankings and uh captain knowledge mosona alois points to the fact that uh zifa and he includes the government here as well needs to avoid our uh, mistakes in the past when it comes to our uh, preparations and he also includes mobilizing resources for next year's tournament last tournament uh there were issues around appearance fees the winning bonuses it's time to start preparing now but we're not hearing a lot of that coming out of zifa are you expecting that this time will be significantly more different 
Uh, expecting, I think, uh, can be the wrong word, but hoping. Uh, hoping is the word that I could use that I hope. <laughs> I hope that so, that we can, you know, uh, because he knows. You see, like knowledge say, he knows what happened. He is actually aware that what is possible, you know. So he is already getting the word out there. Could you please, can you do it now? Let's not do what we did in Egypt. You know, I think for, for knowledge, he is being diplomatic, but it's a plea that he has thrown out there could you please let's not go there and do something because these guys they know knowledge and the other guys they know what is this is a swan song this might be their last afghan appearance you know so they want to go out there and do something they are the golden generation they are capable of doing something so he, he is hoping that something can be done so that we can go there and play smoothly without any disturbances like what happened in egypt 2019. we certainly hope for smooth preparations and a a good tournament hopefully we go beyond the group stages which we've previously struggled to do and speaking of those preparations we're going to be talking a lot more about them on tomorrow's show you don't want to miss that talking about mobilizing those resources for next year's tournament which absolutely needs to start now the game is on tonight zimbabwe versus zambia at the national sports stadium kickoff is 9 p.m and according to unconfirmed reports this is how the warriors might line up against zambia martin mapis Takuzwa Chimwemwe, Victor Kamoka, Alec Mudimu, Onismo Basera, Tafadzwa Rusike, Buto Nube, Ovidi Karuru, Romario Matova, last JC like Mike uh, would like to see, and Evans Rusike. And that is your starting 11 potentially for tonight's match. So all the best to our Warriors uh, tonight against Chipolo Polo. Let's end uh, this campaign on a high. We've already qualified. We know it's a dead rubber, uh, but let's still do the business. We'll catch you tomorrow for a review and possibly a small preview of AFCON uh, as we take a look at this campaign of our Warriors. For now, may God richly bless you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Manandi, out. <laughs>